What's up guys, this is Sonora Design and today is going to be the best day ever because we are finishing the Love Is Speakers. Guess what? Today is going to be the best day ever because I am sick and I didn't go to work. Good thing about being sick is that I can stay home and finish videos. So before I start sweating a lot, I'm going to talk about video number three. And on video number three, we're going to finish the love is speakers okay we are gonna set up the crossovers we're gonna test them we're gonna extract frd and zma files and we're gonna make the crossovers on xsim plus uh we install the drivers we finish the metal legs if you like the metal legs you finish the metal legs if you don't like the metal legs as you guys comment on the first video and the second video you don't have to make the legs and save you some time so that's what's gonna happen now on video number one we talked about our goals and we made our plan and we started uh, designing the speaker. On video number two, we did some woodworking. We get the boxes ready. And on video number three, you're going to finally listen and see the results with curves and uh, my impressions. Uh, anyways, let's move on, guys, because it's a lot. Uh, and it's getting too hot here. Ah. All right, guys. So... I just plugged it in, okay? Full range and the subwoofer. I added like a coil for the subwoofer. And guess what? It sounds like crap. <laughs> the meads are so annoying. I mean, it has potential. I don't have much to say, man. Let's work on it. I'll get the microphone and the measuring paraphernalia so we can try and work a little bit on the crossovers. Maybe add a tweeter on the back. I'm gonna leave those playing for a little bit and adjust the measuring kit. And I'll be back, guys. I gotta tell you something. I'm really frustrated because I was doing the sweeps here and Checking the frequency response, but there is a resonance in the box. Can you believe that? I'm gonna fix that and we're gonna come back later. <sighs> All right, guys, new angle. I gotta tell you guys something. The box is all super sturdy, okay? That little box here for the the full range it's it makes it like re all reinforced but as soon as we cut it here and this whole area here is empty it's uh, i feel it vibrating here i don't know if you guys can hear but it's a different noise i think that's the problem so i'm gonna add um a brace inside i should have done that before so now you guys know when you're making that you add a brace mm. let's open that thing let's remove it let's get ready for the brace and the box is gonna be amazing in like 20 minutes makes a difference that's it simple as that might work might not work 
Okay, let it sit for a little bit. And... Ay, ay, ay. Speaker build is like a box of surprises. You never know what's gonna happen. I think we got it. Let's uh, wait for the glue to dry and start over our measurements. Okay. Adios, amigos. All right, guys. So, we are here. It's all set up. And we're gonna get the FRD and ZMA files for those drivers. But first, I gotta record the screen. We're on. And we're gonna start from scratch here. Let's get the generator and we have the SPL. And we're gonna just like, uh, let's do something like 80 decibels at around. Okay, that's good. Good enough. Okay, we got it. Ah, let's apply some smoothie. CHP 70 uh, FRD and we're gonna get the woofer now. Let's do it. Got it. Okay, so we've got the FRD and ZMA here. And we're gonna uh, get uh, the CHR, we're gonna go to File, Export, Measurement, X, Text. Okay, smoothing, and we're gonna go, okay. So this is gonna be uh, CHP70.FRD. And we say to desktop, and we overwrite the other one. And then we go to the woofer, Export, Measurement as text, okay. W5 dot FRD. And we save it. I think I got it. And now for ZMA, it's the impedance uh, file. We need something else instead of our EW and the microphone. Now we need that's V3 audio test system, okay? So I'm gonna connect this that's here on my computer. We don't need the amplifier anymore. And I hope it works. I wish I have everything in the same computer, but it seems kind of impossible. So we plug the wires in and we're gonna measure the impedance. Let's plug our subwoofer first, cause it's right here. Okay, we got the impedance for the subwoofer. Let's switch now. Maybe let's just save that. Um, let's uh, export impedance. Oh, that's for matter Dude, that's so easy. So this is gonna be the W5. This should be ZMA. And we're gonna save it. New folder which is gonna be the lovies. Five impedance data, five, pa, 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 save. Let's switch. <laughs> now we're gonna take the impedance of the, our full range. It's quick and easy. It doesn't hurt. Wow, there's crackling. Okay, got it. Let's export CHP70. ZMA at the law of V's. Okay, so guys, we have uh, everything we need for our crossover. And we're gonna start like playing with the crossover. So we're gonna open uh, XSIM and we're gonna start a new design. And we're gonna add the CHP and we're gonna add the W5. And we have to load the FRD and ZMA files. So let's see if we got it. CHP70. CHP70. And we open it up. Oh, and you got the ZMA already. So we got the CHP70. Now we're going to upload the W5 FRD. W5 FRD. And it's going to do the ZMA as well. Okay, so we got it. So now, guys, let's see. What's gonna happen? Okay, let's keep working on our crossovers, okay guys? Cause you know, 
It's fun, I guess. I don't know. All right, and I'm back. Ah, guys, the thing is, the graph on the crossover, the next scene, it's great without crossovers, okay? It's like flat. You see a flat curve here. So it's a little deep here. That's because of the, the full range on 600 hertz. And that shows on our uh, curve response here on our speaker. At one meter, we have a lot of mids and highs. And mid bass is kind of shy. So let's see something. Start playing around. Out of phase. Mid bass. Goes down. The thing is, our buffer is kind of a little off. So we measure it. Our woofer, woofer is like ten and a half inches off. Let's see if we can adjust that. Uh, and ten point five inches. Uh, okay, so maybe that's helping uh, drop the six hundred hertz. No, oops. Uh, then it goes the other way. Okay, we're gonna start taking curves and see uh, what happens, what affects our thing here, okay? Let me, let me adjust everything back again. Microphonic. Microphone at one meter. Measuring tape. It's at one meter. Okay, so now, Let's see if, if the, the graph, like the REW graph, matches the crossover graph. And that's the graph we have uh, with the CHP plus a W5 with a 10 resistor on a full range. Okay, so that's what we have. We have this deep here, you know, from 200, around 200 to 600. We have like a deep at 600. Let's uh, get our curve with all the drivers playing. Okay, and see like what, what the deep, what the deep is all about. Guys, this part is annoying and stressful. I just like sanding the wood. All right. Okay, that's this curve. Let me show you something, guys. I'm gonna adjust the crossover. Right face and ten and a half inches behind. Okay, so that's the curve we're getting. It's pretty funny because the result is not giving us a deep at around 500 hertz, 600. There's a deep at 600. It's not that bad. If we invert the face, the deep goes to at around 1K, 1.1.1. That's what we're gonna do and see if it is gonna behave the same way. I took my time and I worked a little bit on our speaker by myself because it's a lot of work, okay? It's a lot of testing components and measuring and all that. So at the end of the day or at the end of the week, I got to those curves. I know you guys like curves, so I'm gonna show you guys the curves we got. In the beginning, we have the CHP, which is our full range and the subwoofer playing together with no filter at one meter. And that's the curve we got, number three. So that's the curve we got, which is not bad. I mean, but bass, mid bass, low mids here are a little lower. This driver and the mids are a little on the top. At the end, we have the highs 
a little attenuated. That's the full range driver. That's how it's supposed to work. It's a vintage paper cone, uh, full range driver that's supposed to have like higher meads, like smooth, higher meads and like less highs. That's where we started. And then we moved to, we attenuated the full range a little bit. And we got to curve number five, which is kind of okay, but the mid bass goes down. I mean, bass here at 100 to 200 hertz matches the mid highs here. One, two, three, four, five, and high frequencies. And I wasn't happy, so we kept moving on. And I added a notch filter. Okay, that's a notch filter. Guess what? It lowers up a little bit and our curve's getting somewhere in here. So we added a notch filter to the full range so we can control those mids a little bit, okay? Because it was annoying. It was something with the woofer, with the subwoofer, and it was annoying. So I wanted to control those like high mids, which is like 1K, 2, 3, high mids, high frequencies. So that's where we are. And at the end, I started adding a coil to the subwoofer, okay, to cut the highs off the subwoofer so we can have them more like playing better together. That's what happened here on curve, curve number 12. It's getting flatter and flatter. Don't worry about the sub bass, the lower bass below 100 hertz now. Don't worry about the highs over 6 kilohertz, okay? Then I added an L pad. Guess what? Oh, pad works great. Number 14. I'm not even going to show you because we got super low impedance, okay? And that's not safe to our amplifier. So we eliminated the L pad and we kept moving on. And we got to curve number 18, the red one. Let me take the 12 off. So that's uh, our mid range with a notch filter of 1 millihenry and 13 resistor and 0.8 millihenry coil and a subwoofer. That's the curve we got. Remember, this is the measurement at one meter in the garage. So we don't have much bass because there's no much reflection on the bass, the port, and, and the highs are a little shy. Okay, so what did I do? I took the speakers inside the living room and we got to curve 19. It's the same crossover and we have this curve here. The bass between 100 and 500 hertz, a little higher, great. And we got lower bass to at around 53 hertz, which is great. That's one speaker at one meter inside my living room, okay? So I have like a more contained uh, ambient and I kept moving on guys I measured it at 60 centimeters which is pretty close and the curve is kind of okay we get more mids and highs doesn't matter and I measured it at my listening position that's left and right speakers and I sit right in the front like a few feet away I would say 10 feet the speakers are like four feet from the wall and that's the curve we got the 21 okay I'm gonna delete this one so that's the curve we have here this is our speaker at listening position inside my living room and guess what if you got an average here I don't know we have 26, 27 hertz inside of the room with those subwoofers. That's impressive, okay? So I'm happy with that already. The thing is, the highs are low. Why? Because we're far away from the full ranges and they are already shy on the highs. You can see that at 3, 4K, the highs start rolling off and we have highs going down a lot. Guess what? I added a tweeter on the back to give us this little top high frequencies and a more spacious sound stage. The tweeters are on the back. So we have curve 22, which is tweeter on the back. And if we align that at like 400 Hertz to compare, let's say 400 Hertz. Okay, look at the difference on the highs. Okay, we got more two, three K here. And then we get more after like five, six K. And that's the final response, kind of. Yeah, that's the final response in my listening position with the tweeters on the back. 
So blue curve is our final curve inside my living room measured at like, I don't know guys, 10 feet. The speakers are kind of like away from the walls and we have like 27 Hertz inside my living room. Meaning those speakers are great. Uh, they are surprising. They sound pretty good and natural. We have like a couple of components, okay? On a subwoofer, on the full range and on the tweeter. I'm gonna plot the crossover schematics on the screen right now so you can copy and make your own. That's my crossover, pretty simple. And I'm really happy with the results. I was surprised. It is impressive how those little speakers play and the frequency response we have. We can say that we have it around 27 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. So guys, uh, we're gonna move on cause it's getting so hot and I want this thing to be ready, okay? Move on guys, move on. Ay, ay, ay. All right guys, so uh, the speakers are almost ready. And for now, I have to drill the holes on the back Add the tweeters, add the crossovers inside, add the metal legs, and our speakers are gonna be ready soon. I don't know what to do next. I think I'm gonna start with the tweeters on the back. I might be missing something, but I don't care. Let's move on. Okay, guys, see you in a bit.
with video number three and on video number three we finish the love is the thing is uh i'm gonna do my quick impressions as always at the end of the video if you haven't watched video number one with uh the design goals and drawings sketches ideas uh, tests and driver selection you go check video number one video number two woodworking getting the boxes ready and video number three that's the video where we put our speaker all together with the metal legs and the drivers and we test it and we get FRD and ZMA and we take curves and we talk about the uh, results I gotta tell you something it was a surprise uh, I really thought it was going to be just a regular speaker, small speaker that looks good and sound okay, but it's uh, it's pretty interesting. Those subwoofers, that how low they can get on such a small enclosure, the tweeters on the back, how much they improve the sound stage, like the depth and, uh, and the ambience, uh, and the Mark Audio drivers, the Papercom Mark Audio drivers, which I like it. It sounds pretty good. It's a very interesting design if you guys are looking for something that's a small footprint that looks good that can mingle in your uh, living room or your office whatever um, just try this design 
the results are impressive for the amount of money and time and effort we put on it. You can make those out of plywood, you can make those of MDF, uh, whatever you want. Just follow the directions and the directions are going to be posted on the link down below. So don't worry, just go down below and copy my design. I, I think that's all I have to say about that. Hope you guys had fun, enjoyed the video and hope to see you guys soon.